Good morning. Welcome everyone. It's good to see you this morning. Are there any announcements? No announcements this morning. Okay. I don't think I have any announcements either. So we'll get right to our worship then. Let's just take a few moments to quiet ourselves and center ourselves and open our hearts to the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please join me in our call to worship. Sing the new day. God we come. Sing a new song. Awaken we come. Sing to the light. So heaven we come. Let's lift our hearts together in our opening prayer. There is a richness here. A richness that greets and grows and holds and challenges and keeps. There is a richness here. A richness that surrounds and brings and delivers and gives. The richness holds us in our weakness, fills us in our hunger, finds us when we're lost. So here, richly blessed, we have come and we have been found. Let this time together inspire us in richness and in grace. Now let's listen to our hymn of praise and peace like the river.
day of the clouds and thick darkness, day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon people that they shall walk like the blind because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. The fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed. For a full, a terrible end he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. Our second reading is Psalm 90, 1 through 12. O oh God, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us back to dust and say, turn back, you mortals. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, or like a watch in the night. You sleep them away. They are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed. In the evening it fades and withers. For we are consumed by your anger, by your wrath. We are overwhelmed. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins, in the light of your countenance. For all our days pass away under your wrath. Our years come to an end like a sigh. The days of our life are 70 years, or perhaps 80, if we are strong. Even when their span is only toil and trouble, they are soon gone and we fly away. Who considers the power of your anger? Your wrath is as great as the fear that is due to you. So teach us to count our days that we may gain a wise heart. And now our third reading is from 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 through 11. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not have to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. And when they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness for that day to surprise you like a thief, for you are all children of light, and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness, so then, let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep at night, for those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, and put on the breastplate of faith and love. For a helmet, the hope. 
hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another, build up each other, as indeed you are doing. Here ends the this morning's scripture reading. The gospel lesson today continues in the gospel according to Matthew, from chapter 25, verses 14 through 30. Listen for the word of God. Jesus said, For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received five more talents, who had received the five talents, came forward bringing five more talents. Saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. Master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. Master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow, and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. To all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing. May God add a blessing to this reading from God's holy word. So there's one sure thing about Matthew's gospel, at least in my mind. There are a lot of very difficult parables for us to deal with. And today's is a difficult one. We are coming towards the end of Matthew's gospel and towards the end of Jesus' ministry and time here on earth. He is coming closer and closer to the time of his crucifixion, and his followers will have some very difficult times ahead of them as they try to make sense of what has just happened to their beloved Jesus and the dangers that they will face as they continue Jesus' mission of spreading the message of God's love. And they will be faced with challenges as they will be called to continue what Jesus has started, to lift up the poor and the marginalized, to visit the prisoners, to 
feed the hungry, heal the suffering. And so Jesus uses these very difficult passages, these parables, to teach his disciples the lessons that they need to learn. But if you're like me, so often these parables leave me scratching my head as I try to make sense of this. So today we have the parable of the talents. A little background, you may remember that a talent in that time was a denomination of money. It was equivalent to approximately 10 to 15 years of an average laborer's wages. So one talent was 10 to 15 years of an average laborer's wages. Our definition of talent, you know, something that we're good at, a particular ability that we have, is thought to have come from this parable. The man who is going on the journey in this allegory is said to be Jesus. The Jesus who is with them now but will be going away soon by his death on the cross. One day he will return, but no one knows when. So the man in the parable who is going on a journey, you see, he's extremely rich. And he entrusts his property to his workers so that his work can continue while he is away. So he gives out these gifts, these talents. And even the smallest amount is an enormous gift. So think about it. The one man gets five talents, 75 to 100 years worth of salary. One gets two talents, 20 to 30 years of salary. And the other gets one talent, 10 to 15 years of salary. Can you imagine receiving such a gift, even if it's one talent? The first two, they take those talents and they use them to continue the work of their master. The master did not give them instructions as to what they were to do with the talents. But the first two seem to understand that the master's work needed to continue, that his estate needed to continue to grow. And so they took a chance. It was a risk. But they took those talents, which they could have easily lost, and it worked to make them multiply. And do their work. They both doubled their talents. And when their master came back, they were rewarded. As we heard in our scripture, his master said to him, well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. By continuing the master's work, they entered the joy of their master. Then there's that third worker who was given the one talent. He was afraid of what might happen if he could not give that one talent back to the master. So he dug a hole and he buried it, which was apparently a very common thing to do with money and valuables in that time when you wanted to keep them safe. So he digs a hole and buries it. And when the master comes back, he has the one talent to give back to him. But the master is not happy. He says, then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter. So I was afraid. And I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. 
Not only did he not did he do nothing with the talent, but he also made a judgment about his master based on what we don't really know. You reap where you do not sow, and you gather where you do not scatter. And we know that is not Jesus. As I think about this very difficult parable, I think about the abundant gifts that God has given to all of us, that God has given to me. Some of us have been given very extravagant gifts, like the servant with the five talents. But again, even the servant with just the one talent was given an enormous gift. And we heard from our parable that we are given each according to our ability. So we are given no more or no less than we can handle. What have we done with the gifts that have been given to us from our master? What are you doing with your talents? The talents that we have been given can be, like in the parable, actual money. And we see examples of very wealthy people. Some use their wealth for altruistic causes. The person that immediately comes to my mind is Bill Gates. But as you all know, some use their wealth for their own selfish purposes. And I don't need to give you examples because there are many out there and I know you can come up with your own. The talents that God has given us don't have to be just money. Our talents, as we define talents in our day, can be the abilities that God has given to us, whatever they may be. Could be the gift of music, like we have here with some of our talented people. Could be the gift of writing, the gift of painting, of art. Could be building, working with our hands. Could be the gift of listening, the gift of caregiving, the gift of teaching. I see our teachers in our midst. The gift of spreading the message of Jesus Christ. As you think about your own gifts, your own talents, what have you done with them? Are you using them to increase our master's property? Are you taking risks like the first two servants did with their talents. I think more often we are much more like the last servant who is afraid. Too afraid to take a risk. And we take our talents and we bury them. Which is not what the master wants us to do. We hide away our talent because we are afraid. We decide that it is better to be cautious than to step out and take a risk and potentially lose what we have. Potentially be embarrassed by stepping out and, and trying to use our talents. We do that in church as well. We are afraid to take risks. We are afraid to try new worship styles. We are afraid to have new music. We are afraid to worship in a different place. Sometimes we are afraid to spend the money that we have in our bank account. We're afraid to take a risk on other outreach programs or things that maybe God wants us to do with our abundance. We are afraid of using our talents 
whatever they may be, because we may sometimes think our talents are not good enough. We forget that God only gives us the talents for our own abilities. We are afraid to take risks. Because what happens if we fail? But I would like to think that the master would not have been upset if the talents were lost. I think the master would have been happy that they tried. It was the one who did not try, who did not take a risk that the master was unhappy with. This parable for me as a reminder that God has blessed me with many gifts. And God has only given me the gifts for my ability. So I need to muster up some courage and use those gifts in the in service of God's kingdom. Build it up. Spread God's love bring justice and peace and reconciliation. God did not give me talents to dig a hole and bury them. God gave me talents to use. And God has given you talents to use as well. I pray for the strength to use them for Christ's sake. Amen. Let us pray. God of infinite abundance, we thank you for blessing us with our many talents. We pray that we would have the courage to take risks and to use them, trusting that you have given us everything we need, all the abilities that we require to use those gifts that you have blessed us with. Help us, loving God, to be the faithful servants that you desire for us to be so that we can continue to build your kingdom and so that one day your kingdom will come here on earth as it is in heaven. Now, as we do each week, we have our offering plates in the back of the sanctuary. If you are able, as you leave, we ask that you would place your offering in those offering plates. Children of the light, richness, and blessings are ours. And now the time is ours. Met by God in the holiness of this space, inspired by God's word, God's gifts, God's love, Encouraged by the presence and commitment of everyone else around us, let's try something new. We've given before, we've given to the church, let's keep giving. But let's give something new. Maybe it means that we add a few dollars to our usual pledge. Maybe it means that we add a pledge of time that we haven't included before. Maybe it means that we make a commitment of giving for the first time ever. Now is the time to do something new about God's abundant gifts.
Now let us lift our hearts together in our intercessory prayers of the people. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Lord of the church, ignite your people with the passion of your love. By the fire of your Holy Spirit, unify us across ministries, congregations, and denominations, and refine us to participate in your activities throughout the world. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Lord of creation, we stand in awe at the work of your hands and praise you for the beauty of nature. Bless the earth for your glory and restore its integrity where exploitation has caused ruin. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Lord of the nations, sound forth your justice in the ears of all leaders. Increase concern for those who are most vulnerable, especially as international leaders forge trade agreements and cooperate to end human rights abuses. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Lord of all in need, search out all who cry to you in distress. Scatter the heavy clouds of depression, chronic illness, unemployment, and loneliness with your radiant light. Send us as encouragement and signs of your healing. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Lord of the stranger, stir up holy restlessness in us to extend love to those at the margins. Release our desire for control and open us to learn from the perspectives of others. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy. Who else would you like to lift up in prayer today? Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Lift up all those on our prayer list, all those who long to be here but are unable for whatever reason. Pray for all those who are lonely, all those who are ill, all those who are living in uncertainty. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Lord of the living and the dead, we give you thanks for all the saints at rest from their labors. Rouse us to live by their example, that saints yet to come may also know your love. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Now let us pray as our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, has called us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now we'll listen to our closing hymn, O God, our help in ages past. Thank you.
Nor now as children of the light, ready to serve, eager to give, delighted to love. May God's blessing, source, word, and spirit one, keep, lead, and mold you now and forever. Amen. May the peace of God, which does surpass all of our understanding, be with you all now.